What's going on guys, it's Greg here today and I'll be reviewing the M13B Assault Rifle today for Ground War. This gun is absolutely amazing. I love the M13B and I know a lot of people out there might not be the biggest fan of this gun because I don't really see it being used all that much and I want to change that today because I personally feel that the M13B is one of the kings of consistency here in Ground War and I think that it deals very good damage at really good ranges, has a solid time to kill, and overall it's very easy to control. And on top of that, you don't really need to stack too much recoil on this attachment, which can allow us to go ahead and use some various types of attachments. Now I do want to say there are some downsides to the M13B, and that's what I want to go over here real quick. So the M13B has a lot of idle sway and gun bobbing. However, this is a gun that I am going to make an exception to my crazy accuracy builds that I normally make because the M13B's recoil plot, in my opinion, is very easy to control. All you have to do is get a nice strafe in for that recoil smoothing to kick in, and then you just have to pull down to the right ever so slightly, and this gun is pretty much a laser beam when you do that. As for my secondary in the gameplay in the background, I'm using the F-Tac Siege. I'm not a fan of this weapon yet. Maybe I just don't have the right class setup. You guys will see it cost me quite a few gunfights. I just think in multiplayer, it's kind of weak. In Warzone, I know a lot of people like it, but here in multiplayer, I just think it's a very weak weapon. It takes six shots to kill at the minimum, and it goes all the way out to like nine shots to kill, which in my opinion is just not competitive. But the gameplay in the background is also some heavy objective-based gameplay. I get eight captures with 87 kills and only 8 deaths, so hopefully you guys will enjoy the gameplay, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at my M13B class setup, and then we will go ahead and talk about it. So here we are going over our M13 red B emoji class setup, and we have the Echoless 80 Suppressor, the 14 inch Bruin Echelon Barrel, the 1 milliwatt Atremus Laser, the M13C Factory Stock, and 556 five, high velocity rounds and every five seconds from here on out you will see a new tune show up on the screen pause the video as needed Moving back to the gameplay in the background, as you guys can see, I am using this exact class setup, and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't really see myself playing around with any other builds on the M13. As you guys know, I like to play around with builds all the time. I'm constantly changing up attachments, not only to keep things fresh, but also to see if I could find something that might even be better yet. However, this gun, I am very confident that this class setup is pretty much going to be my permanent M13B class setup, even if they were to change anything with this gun, although I don't really think they will. The reason I like this class setup so much is because it has the best of both worlds, that is, speed and range. You see, the M13B isn't a very hard gun to control, so I'm not really too worried about recoil control at all. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and throw up the hard-coded stats for this weapon, and we can go ahead and take a look at, well, what exactly these attachments are doing. So like I said, the handling is actually pretty good for a ground war build coming from me. The ADS time is 381 milliseconds, and I'm not going to lie, most of my ground war builds are anywhere from 400 to 500 milliseconds in ADS time, so... Honestly, I'll take the 381 because it does feel responsive and snappy, so you will notice that right away. Another thing is the muzzle velocity is almost, well, over double, so it's pretty much going to feel like hit scan out to very long ranges, which is where this gun excels because we have heavily modified the damage range of this gun using the Echoless 80 and the barrel that we have on as well, so... Therefore, we're going to be able to use this gun at very far ranges, and that is where the M13B excels. Because at the minimum time to kill, we have a 213 millisecond time to kill, which is definitely outshined by some other guns. However, at the farthest ranges, on the other hand, our slowest time to kill is 355 milliseconds, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, that's one of the fastest time to kills for assault rifles in the game. So this is a ranged powerhouse. However, it will require you to trace more shots to maybe something like a cast off 7.62 because, well, it's going to be five shots to kill. However, 
it's pretty easy to control. So you should be able to control this gun out to the longest ranges. We could also see our sprint speed is improved. Our ADS forward and strafing speed is also improved and our recoil control is very slightly improved. And as for the recoil pattern itself, I always like to go to the firing range and take my steps all the way to the back of the wall, shoot one uncontrolled mag into the wall and then proceed to walk up to it. And as we can see here by this recoil plot itself, all we have to do is just get a nice strafe in there to get that recoil smoothing into effect so that way we don't have to worry about these horizontal zigzags and then we just have to pull ever so slightly down to the right. So now that we have went over the M13B, I'm going to go over the gameplay now in the background so you guys can better understand what is going on here in the gameplay. So, I'm using this gunship to shoot into B. Why? Notice the offense medals. Offense medals give you 50 points per kill if you're running score streaks. And this is important because it will actually add towards your score streak meter, which means if you are using this properly and you use kill streaks that are lethal and they get you kills, if you are killing people on or around objectives, you'll get 50 points per kill on them, which will allow you to earn more streaks faster if you've already died, because you can't earn multiple streaks in the same life here in Modern Warfare 2. But utilizing that, you'll be able to get your streaks faster, which is something I try to do if possible. Now, as you guys can see, our team this game has been down in score quite a bit, and our team will remain down in score for almost the entire game. I just keep running between the flags and trying to capture them over and over again, while also trying to get my kill streaks, and at the same time, trying to make sure that we can hold map control and try to win the match. So, I'm right now I'm going towards E, and I'm going to rotate back to D here soon, because I'm trying to make sure that I can get these flags under control. Santa Senya border crossing, I don't mind this map compared to something like Sarif Bay because I'm able to rotate between the flags quite easily if I want to. On maps that are much bigger like Sarif Bay, you're going to have a harder time playing the objective because once you capture a flag, it's pretty much either you defend that flag or if you try to rotate, you got to go over 200 to 300 meters away just to get to the next objective. Also, like I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of the FTAC Siege. It just doesn't feel all that strong, the recoil's pretty wobbly, and it's just, I don't know, I just, I'm not a big fan of this gun. And you guys can see I got absolutely deleted by a Lockman Shroud. So I feel like if I had P890s, I wouldn't even try to use the FTAC Siege, and I would have just, well, used my M13C, and would have had a much better chance of taking that guy out in the gunfight. But anyways, we go back into our gunship, and I'm taking note of anybody who's near objectives, trying to take them out as quickly as possible, because that way, before they get into a building or whatnot, I will be able to earn some extra score towards my next set of streaks, as we mentioned with that offense medal. Now, something you do have to be careful of is if you are using something like a gunship or a chopper gunner is being killed. The reason being is, well, I still don't know if this is fixed. So, if you use a gunship, and you die in your gunship, the game could potentially kick you out of the match. This is something that plagued this game for months, and I haven't been kicked recently, but I still just don't have enough of a sample size of dying in my gunship to know if it's been fixed or not. It was never mentioned in the patch notes, so really, who knows? But another thing is, is whenever you are shooting a chopper gunner or a gunship, or whatever it may be, that is controlled by you, you will actually disable your ghost perk. So, enemy UAVs will be pinging you. It acts as an unsuppressed gun, and this is the only Call of Duty game that this has ever done this in. I'm not sure if it's a bug that the developers just don't know about, which I'm assuming it probably is, considering that it took them five seasons to patch the integrated suppressors not working properly, but I don't think it's ever going to be fixed. So, I'm just warning you guys, if you are in a chopper gunner or a gunship, try to call it in in a very safe place, make sure, you know, there's not really enemy UAVs up at the time, or else you'll be a red dot pinging on the enemy's radar, and somebody will most likely chase you down. Anyways, I'm here at C, and I'm trying to go ahead and get another capture off. We're still down heavily in score, and as you can see, we do have three flags. However, whenever I am this far down in score, I still will try to get a DEF CON going if possible. Reason being is, is we're down by a pretty large deficit. 40 points in this point in the match is nothing to sneeze at, and we really do have to keep that in mind. On top of that, we can see that we were losing A, and it's just a tick away from being captured. I'm assuming the person there either left the area or died. So I'm going to try to go back to D, but as you can see, the FTAC siege is 
hip fire and uh, overall damage output was just not enough. I get taken out by one burst of a Lockman Shroud, which is just, it's a very good gun. But this is that guy who was on a 10 kill streak, and he's been defending D all game. And I've died to him twice at this point, so I know he's still here and streaking up. I'm able to get some bullets into him, and I'm going to challenge him because, well, I want to get D captured. So, as we can see, I decide to make the play to throw a Betty down to help protect me in case he wants to push. I saw his diamond through the wall, which is a bug in Ground War. You can actually see a lot of diamonds through walls uh, in certain maps. Al Malik International is the biggest culprit of this, especially above the sea flag. But I saw that, and I saw which way he was going to go, so I was able to take him out as he peeked the corner, but I was also taken out by one of his teammates that pushed me. At this point, I'm here at the D flag, and I'm just capturing it, and I'm watching some different ways that my enemies could possibly come from, and the reason I am watching this way of the D flag is because the enemies have the EHQ. That means they will be spawning towards the E flag. So... This is the back spawn of D, and therefore I want to watch that while I'm capturing it to make sure that no enemies are going to be spawning in on the D flag and then able to take me out with ease. As I make my way back towards the D flag, I'm coming here as I'm trying to dodge this tank and try to get the proper timing down to go ahead and rotate towards E. As we can see, the tank is occupied by a teammate, so I'm going to go ahead and now rotate, and since we're almost here at E, I'm just taking a look checking some angles, clearing some angles, making sure there's no enemies around that I could potentially pick off, and try to add up towards my VTOL jet. Now, I know there's been a lot of people that have been trying to sit in that green building up top, so I'm going to keep my mind on that, and I'm going to try to pre-aim it as much as possible, because there's a squad up there that keeps spawning on top of each other. And, as I'm up here trying to dodge the APC, one of them ends up peeking and I'm able to get a capture kill resulting in 150 score rather than 100 score, so I'm going to get a little bonus towards my VTOL jet. Now, there is an APC here, so I'm going to be careful about how I go about capturing the E-Flag. I don't just want to sit on the E-Flag the entire time, because this APC is going to know that, and they are going to come get me, and I just can't defend myself against an APC. But a friendly APC rolls up, and to help assist him in the tank fight, I'm going to go ahead and start shooting at that APC, and I realize another one of those guys who was in that window ends up peeking it, and I take him out. Now I almost die, but I get my VTOL jet, and I'm going to go ahead and call down his VTOL jet over their spawn because a lot of people are spawning in their HQ trying to re-grab the E flag. So I'm going to call that in to help assist us defend the E flag, and I'm also going to try to get a rotation off to D. Because at this point we are still down in score, and the enemies are taking objectives pretty aggressively. So I figured, well, we have some teammates at E, they can defend it, I'm going to go back to the D flag, and I'm going to try to get a capture in. On top of that, as I come back here, I'm pretty close to my Stealth Bomber, so I know that if I get this capture off, I will get my Stealth Bomber and Gunship. I'm going to put a Proximity Mine behind my back to watch me, and the reason I'm looking this way this time is because the enemies own C and nobody is taking the C flag. The C spawns are closer towards D, so anyone who's spawning on C, I know that they will have to come through that doorway rather than the ones towards the EHQ, and that way I can go ahead and make sure that I am safe and able to get my Stealth Bomber and Gunship. And as you guys can see earlier, a guy walked onto the D flag, and I knew he was going to have to be behind me because of the way I was watching it. So now my Stealth Bomber comes in, it's going to clear out some people. It wasn't the greatest of Stealth Bombers because... The best stealth bombers are the ones that are placed in a straight line covering the most of the map, but unfortunately, the way the flags were, I was going to try to get the most off of C and B in case there were enemies there watching it. And now that I'm back in my gunship, I'm going to help the en enemies get cleared off of the A building, since it seems like our teammate is not able to take them out. I'm also going to try to kill anybody rotating around from B. I don't really need the offense kills, but again, just really trying to assist my team as much as I can by clearing out enemies from whatever position they may be in. Also, I'm looking for vehicles. I'm always actively looking for vehicles in a gunship because I have the best chance of destroying vehicles since the gunship is so effective against vehicles. And we can see there's one sitting on E and another one rolling up. So once I see disabled vehicle, I'm not going to target that one anymore because it will automatically explode by itself. And instead, I'm going to go ahead and try to put as much damage as I can to other vehicles, disable it, and then move on to the next target. Now, the game is just completely glitching out, and I don't know what that was all about, but we're back, and now I'm going to go ahead and rotate towards the D flag, because unfortunately it was captured. Also, as you guys can see, I guess I did enough damage to the transport heli that I was able to take it out, and I destroyed a total of three vehicles while I was in a gunship, giving us a lot of control over the map. 
So now I'm here just watching this doorway. I see there's a teammate watching the front. So, you know, I'm trying to watch maybe some sides. Maybe some people come in from off angles. You never know. But at the same time, we also own C and E. So that means D isn't going to get much traffic based off of spawns. And at this point, now we have the enemies into a DEF CON, and I'm really just trying to figure out where this guy is on the D flag, and it seemed like a teammate took him out. So now I'm just really going to rotate towards B, because, well, B is getting, I believe B was never taken by our team, and A just got taken as well, so if I want to find enemies, this is going to be the best way that I can go. And as I roll up, as you can see, one guy is crossing towards B, and I noticed there was another guy in the distance crossing as well, and I'm able to take him out, and then we are going to win the match because, well, we ended up playing the objective enough, holding those flags, and yep, there it is, 87 kills, 8 captures, 8 deaths. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this gameplay, hopefully this M13 class setup you will find some success with, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out and have a great day.